All right, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to use the graphing calculator to graph data and to um, apply the Clausius-Clapeyron equation to find the heat of vaporization for a liquid. So on the screen, you see vapor pressures for different alcohols. We're gonna focus for this video on the first alcohol in the, in the table, methanol. So what you'll want to do is you're gonna want five or six data points from that table. If you want to take a moment and copy them down on a piece of paper, we're gonna enter them on a graphing calculator in just a moment. So you wanna pick five um, data points or six data points, temperatures and vapor pressures for methanol. Um, and I would suggest choosing five points that are spread out. So don't use five data points in a row. So start with the 50 and end with the 100 and choose some points in between. Notice that the temperatures here are in degrees Celsius. So as you jot that down, make a note of that. And the vapor pressures are in millimeters mercury. So if you wanna pause the video and copy down five or six points, you can do that now. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to another view. I'm gonna to switch to my graphing calculator view. So this is a simulation of a TI-84 plus graphing calculator. If you have any graphing calculator from Texas Instruments, that's TI-83 or TI-84, it's gonna work in a very similar way. So this is the opening screen. And we wanna enter some data to graph, the data that you, just, that you just copied down. So I'm gonna press the stat button on the calculator. So you do the same on yours. So press the stat button. And we wanna to go to number one, the edit, so we can enter data. So choose option one. I've already got some numbers entered in here. If you had some numbers already that you don't want, for example, let me just type a couple numbers here, nine and eight. If you've got some numbers in a list that you don't want, then move your cursor to the top of the list until it's on the symbol for that list. So I've just got my cursor on the L3 symbol. Press clear on your calculator and then enter to delete all the numbers in that list. So once you've got, you're, you're gonna need four lists that are clear of numbers. So enter your four or five, five or six rather data points. Put the temperatures in list one. As you can see, I've got five temperatures. And put your pressures, your vapor pressures for methanol in list two. If you want, you can pause the video so that you can do that. Now keep in mind again that these temperatures are in degrees Celsius and the vapor pressures are in millimeters of mercury. Just, just looking at these things, notice that I can, I can give you a good estimate right now of the normal boiling point for methanol. The normal boiling point is the temperature where the liquid's vapor pressure is standard pressure, in this case 760 millimeters mercury. Looking at list two, we see there's a data point at 767 millimeters mercury, and that's at temperature of 65 degrees Celsius. So the normal boiling point of methanol should be very close to 65 degrees Celsius. Now the point of what we're gonna do next is to make a graph from which we can determine the heat of vaporization for methanol, the molar enthalpy of vaporization, delta H VAP. So on that graph that we're gonna make, we need on the x-axis, the reciprocal of temperature in Kelvin units. We also need on the y-axis, the natural logarithm of the vapor pressures. And for that, the vapor pressures can be any units you like. So since list one right now has the temperatures in Celsius, we need to convert those to Kelvin and take the reciprocal of them. So I'm gonna put that in list three on your calculator, move your cursor up until it's on the L3 symbol. At the bottom of the calculator screen, it should now say L3 equals. Now, keeping in mind the temperatures are in list one, there's more than one way to do this, but here's how I'll do it for this example. Open a bracket and let's convert the temperatures from Celsius to Kelvin. We'll, take, we'll say second function L1. The L1 is right above the number one on the keyboard. And we're gonna convert those Celsius temperatures in list one to Kelvin by adding 273, so plus 273 and then close that bracket. 
So if we just pressed enter now, we would have the temperatures in list three converted to Kelvin, but we want the reciprocal of these temperatures. So on the left side of your calculator, underneath the math button, there's a button that says X to the minus one, which is a reciprocal button. So let's press that. So looking at the screen, we're saying that list three will be populated with numbers that are taken from list one, where 273 was added to them, and the reciprocal of that, of that sum. So now press enter on the calculator, and it fills down with all of the reciprocal of Kelvin temperatures. On your screen, each temperature has just got one or two, sorry, each reciprocal temperature has one or two digits visible. But if you scroll down, you should be able to see that there's a whole bunch of digits that are not being displayed on the screen. Now let's go to list four. So move your arrow to the right to go to list four and put the cursor on the top symbol for L4. So the cursor is on the L4 symbol. At the bottom of the screen, it says L4 equals. Now we're gonna do the Y axis of our graph. This is the natural logarithm of the vapor pressures, which are in list two. So on the left side of your calculator, you see the LN button, which is the natural logarithm button, LN. So press the LN button. And let's say take the natural logarithm of the pressures which are in list two. So second function, list two. List two, L2 is right above the number two on the keyboard. Close that bracket and press enter. And now the calculator has taken the natural logarithm of each of the pressures in list two and displayed that in list four. So remember that list three contains our reciprocal of, of uh, Kelvin temperatures. List four contains the natural log of vapor pressure. So let's create the scatter plot. Above the Y equals button on your calculator, you see the word stat plot. And that's what you wanna do, create a scatter plot in the stat plot feature. So press second function and then stat plot. I have one plot that's already turned on two plots that are turned off, I'm gonna use the plot that's turned on. If you have more than one plot right now that's turned on, you can go and turn uh, all of them off except for one, okay? A quick way to turn all of your plots off is to choose option four, but just press number four and press enter, all of the plots are turned off. So now if I go back, second function, stat plot, all of my plots are turned off. So if you had more than one plot turned on, you might start by just turning them all off. So now I'm gonna use plot one. So choose option number one. You can use whichever plot you wanted. You wanna highlight the word on and press enter so that it turns on this plot. And then the first type of plot, we move down. The first type is a scatter plot. That's the one we want. The X list is what's going to go on the X axis of the graph, and this needs to be the reciprocal of Kelvin temperatures, so it needs to say list three. So second function L3 if it doesn't already say that. The Y list, what's gonna be on the Y axis of our graph, needs to be the natural log of vapor pressure, so L4. So choose second function L4 if it's not already there. The mark is just gonna be what the data points look like on your screen, so it's not that critical to change that. And you can change the color of the graph if you like. So now I wanna see the graph. Do not press the graph button because the graph button will have window settings, the minimum and maximum for X and the minimum and maximum for Y, that was based on the previous graph that had been graphed. So press the zoom button instead Zooming in, choose option nine, which says zoom stat. This means zoom in so I can see a stat plot. That's what that means. So choose option nine, and there's our graph. It looks like five points that form a straight line. At this point, you should sketch the graph on your, on your loose leaf if you're doing this. Label the axes. It's natural log of vapor pressure on the y-axis, one over Kelvin temperatures on the x-axis, and show the five points plotted like that. Oh, to get delta H VAP, the heat of vaporization, we need the slope of this line. That's based on the clausius clapeyron equation. So we wanna press the stat button again. 
and we want to do a linear regression. Regression means find the equation of a line that matches data in a graph. Because our data looked like it was forming a straight line, we're going to perform a linear regression. So you want to go to the right, to the calc menu, calculate, and you can see you can calculate a lot of things. Uh, we want option four, which is linear regression. If you've taken an applied math course, you know that you can also find the equation of a line by a method called median median, which is option three, but we're going to use linear regression, which is option four. If our graph had looked more like a parabola, then we might choose the quadratic regression, option five, but we'll do linear regression, option four. Now I have a newer graphing calculator. And so this is what's on the screen. It says linreg AX plus B. And then it asks me to fill in some information. If you have an older calculator with different older operating system, it's going to say simply linreg at the top of your screen. What you're going to want to type next after linreg on the older calculator is L3. That's where the X values were. So you'd type second function L3. Then you'd put a comma. The comma is the button right above the number seven on your keyboard. And then you'd put where the Y values are, which is L4. So now your screen would say linreg L3 comma L4. You could press enter at that point and it would graph, it would, sorry, it would show you the equation of the line with its slope and Y intercept. And really that's all we need. But if you want to see the graph, if you want to see the straight line on your graph, then you also need to tell it to plot the graph for you. Okay? And to do that, you have to do a few more keystrokes. So after the L3 comma L4, you would put another comma. And then just hold on one moment. For those with the newer calculators, we have a bit of a simpler job. We just say the X list is L3. We say the Y list is L4. And then we're going to go down to the store regression equation line. And this is what the older calculator people are going to type as I do it here. So you would type variables, the VARS button on the calculator. And then you'd go over to the right to Y variables. And you choose option one for functions. And then you could pick any one of these functions. So one more time, you press the VARS button. You went to Y variables to the right, you chose functions, and now you would press the number one or number two, whichever function you want. So with the older calculator, your screen would now say linreg L3 comma L4 comma Y1, and then you could just press enter. For those with the new calculators, we move to the calculate button and then we press enter, and this is this, what we want. So y equals ax plus b looks like in a math class, y equals mx plus b. So the letter a here is the slope of the line, negative 4,420 or negative 4,421 if you want four digits. So you want to write that slope down. The slope is negative 4,421. If I want reassurance that the graph that this actually is the equation of, of my graph, press the graph button on your calculator one more time. And now you can see your five data points with that line going right through them all. So the linear regression line that we just had is the equation of the line that fits our data. If you press the Y equals button on the calculator, you can see that the calculator entered that equation for function Y1 like we had told it to. You don't need all these digits, so I'm gonna, you could delete everything after the decimal place here. Do not delete the X. So negative 4421X. And I can delete a lot of these numbers for the Y intercept of the graph also. So there's a cleaner looking equation. And if I press graph again, it didn't, didn't significantly change the graph to round off the numbers like that. So if you, if you need the slope and you forgot to write it down earlier, you can just press Y equals and you'll see the slope right there, negative 4,421. Or if you just press second function quit, oops, I know I'm wrong. I thought I was going to keep the, the previous display. Um, so to see the slope, you press Y equals and there it is right there, negative 4,421. 
So I hope that helps. Um, the rest of the analysis here to find delta H VAP is to, to use Clausius Clapeyron. This slope is equal to negative delta H VAP divided by R. So to find delta H VAP, you would take this slope and you would multiply it by negative R. The R value is the ideal gas constant. We need the SI version, 8.314, so that when you find delta H, it will have SI units, which will be joules per mole. So you should get something in the 30 to 40,000 range, something like that, and then divide it by 1,000 to get kilojoules per mole. You can do that analysis later. So I hope that helps with how to use the graphing calculators, features, graphing, and linear regression to get delta H VAP for a liquid.